And Isaac is down there sporting. And he's supposed to be going somewhere for the Lord. Oh, my goodness. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of surety she is your wife. And how did you say she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Lest I die for her. Uh-oh. Lest I die for her. Uh-oh. You see, man's love is one thing. Uh-huh. Oh. But there's an agape love. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a God kind of love. And he wasn't willing to die for her. No. Hello. No. And some of us are not willing to die to ourselves, our own motives, our own agendas in life for Christ. Call him. Mm -hmm. So we'll lie and we'll live in the lie and we'll come to church in the lie on, because preacher. we have not surrendered our life because we're not willing to die for Jesus. Come on. Oh, come on, preacher. Are you willing to die for Jesus? Because that's the only way. That's the only yeah. way. To be sold out completely to him. Mm. To experience that deep well. You can experience salvation and have no understanding. Oh. Because it's by grace. But he wants you to go deeper. <laughs> and to go deeper, you must be willing to die for him. Come on, if you're not, the self is still on your throne. And you're living for you. And you're scared. Well, you realize or not, if you're living for self, you've got fear. You you got fear. That's what the Bible's pointing out to you this morning. Mm -hmm. If you're still living for self and you're not willing to give up all that stuff, it's fear. Come on. It's fear to turn loose of it. Oh, you can turn loose this morning, I'm telling you. Whoa. Jesus is trying to touch you. Mm. And Abimelech said, What is this you have done unto us? Well, the people might likely have lain with your wife. And you should have brought guiltiness upon us. Now this is the heathen king. Uh -huh. He doesn't even know Jehovah. All right. Oh, but he knows. They're worshiping something totally different, yet he knows what guiltiness knows. means. Come on. You see, the unsaved know what guilt feels like. <laughs> they know what condemnation feels like. They need a Savior. That's why we're supposed to have compassion. Mm -mm -mm. And we're supposed to be living all the way for the Lord to show the shine and show the example. In verse 11, and Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He who touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. Look out now. And the Lord blessed him. <laughs> and the man waxed great. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> How in the world? Come on. He's halfway in and yeah. halfway out. Trying to make up his mind out of fear. He doesn't want to live for the Lord completely or do what God's trying to get him to do or go towards that land God wants him to do. He's even lying. How is he still being blessed Great. materially? Great. I'm telling you, there's 90% of the churches in this right here. Mm -hmm. They're being blessed materially and, and, and people, and they don't they think they're in the will of God. Mm -hmm. I, God's blessing me. Mm -hmm. I'm doing fine. Mm -hmm. My goodness. It just keeps flowing in, so it must be God's favor upon me. Hmm. That's part of the grace right, that's it. of the covenant that's it. of Abraham. That's it, brother. When you confess Christ to be your Savior, and you allow Him to come in, you don't have it all figured out. Mm -hmm. And we don't. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Come on. Yeah. But the blessing hmm. is still there. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I told you last week, even if you get mad, throw a shoe across the room, <laughs> man, and you're upset. The blessing's still there. Yeah. You're still being blessed. Uh -huh. But you still may not be in the will of God. Will of God. See, the will of God is trying to take you further. He wants to take you to spiritual maturity. And sometimes that's hard. Mm. That, 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 you know, it, it strives with the flesh. Mm. It's a war against the flesh. Yeah. Because oh. the flesh doesn't want to go to spiritual that's maturity. Right. Yet mm. you're still being blessed by God. You're still, God is still covering you. Oh, Abraham lied. I mean, told a bald-faced lie right after he made the covenant with God. But you know why God put Abraham to sleep? Uh-oh. In the covenant that was made, <laughs> Abraham cut the sacrifice, split it in half, as God had told him to do, was to symbolize the cross of Christ being beat, being put on that cross. And instead of Abraham walking through that sacrifice with God and saying, I will keep this covenant with you, God put Abraham to sleep. Yes, he did. Because he knew that man could not I keep the covenant. No. That's right. So yes. what he did huh. is on. it said he, by a smoking furnace and a burning lamp, came and walked 
between the sacrifice, which symbolizes Hebrews 6.13. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, no greater. he swore by himself, <laughs> saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. Right. So the covenant stands on him. That's it. Right. Christ and him crucified. Right. As long as your faith is still in him, does that mean we should dwell in sin? No. Paul says, God forbid. Be. Why then? And how can you lose salvation if there's such a beautiful covenant like this? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how. Come on. If you stay in Gerar, <laughs> and you stay in Egypt, okay. and you stay halfway in, halfway out, guess what starts happening to you? You may have sin upon sin upon sin upon sin and still being blessed year yeah. after year. You may be doing these things and still believing in Christ. But eventually what happens is what's how this serpent is more subtle than any beast of the field. What happens is yeah. your heart starts waxing That's cold That's it. towards the precepts of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you don't want to go any further with nope. the Lord anymore. Nope. Matter of fact, you start withdrawing. Mm -hmm. You start going deeper and deeper into the world nope. instead of deeper and deeper into the way. That's it. Yes. Come on, preacher. And then eventually you will put your faith mm. somewhere, else. somewhere else. That's when you walk out of the covenant of God. Mm. He ain't walking out on you. That's right. Because your heart waxes cold Come on. and becomes stone. Mm. And God sees that danger in all of us. Come on, and preacher. so when He does see, he, he allows situations like a family. <laughs> mm. Situations to cause you to start digging, <laughs> to bring you to where you're supposed to be. Come on, him. Come on, preacher. Let me keep on reading. <laughs> Am I making any sense? Yes, yes, yes. Lord. Verse 13, and the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. Uh-oh. They envied him. And that's what the blessings fall. Mm -hmm. It's what Paul says about his own people in Romans 11, that they may envy those who are in Christ right. and repent and come in. Mm -hmm. But you see here it says they just envied what he had. Come on. They envied his possessions. But they didn't want what he had because he was still a liar. <laughs> he was still in the world. <laughs> he didn't shine the light of Christ or Jehovah God or the Abrahamic covenant. He was being blessed material, so they're envying his material substance, gotcha. but they still don't want his God. Mm -hmm. Hello. That's why I'm saying we are supposed to shine the light because there's people that envy your blessings, but they still don't want what you've got because you're still in sin. Mm -hmm. And they see it. And they say, you're no different than me. That's why we're supposed to come out and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Oh, yeah. And when you come out and be ye separate, yeah. saith the Lord, mm -hmm. then the other ones see that you are with God. Come on, preach it. Thank you, Lord. They don't just envy what you have. They envy what's inside. What's inside. Oh. 